Okay, so we are here. Um, now the viewpoint of a I'm just actually going to move this so it's all resting on the plane, the gr the gr uh, zero ground plane. So if you just select everything, press W. Here's another little move we're going to learn. If you hold B, if you hold D, you can move the pivot point of objects wherever you want. But if you hold D, you do V at the same time, and then you just middle mouse button, click and hold like you did for the move snap. It'll snap the, the uh, moving gimbal to that vertex. And then if we hold spacebar, go down to front view, this uh, crossbar here, is the ground. So if V V snaps to vertex, if we hold the if we left click and just let go on the Y axis arrow to activate it, we hold X, X will snap to grid lines. Boom. Let's just do that and then go back to perspective, grab everything again, and then center pivot. If it's not on your shelf, modify center pivot up here. Then we're good. So a character, let's make these a bit larger actually. I mean, an actual Tory, this, let's find out how big an actual Tory is in general. Nine meters tall. Nine hundred. That's going to be huge. Because uh, just, just to clarify, if we create, if we hold spacebar, go to create, which is the same as going up here to create. Measure tools, distance tool. And we go right here and we snap to the grid. We snap to the grid again, holding X. When you place it, X will snap it to the grid. This is 34. And then if we grab this all the way up, where are we? We're holding X as we move. So it's snapping to centimeters as we go 900. So let's grab all of our pieces here. We're gonna group it by pressing Control G. Control G. That puts everything in one unified space at center location. That way when we scale it up, everything scales at the same time. Let's go about there for now. We 
we can delete that distance tool. Okay. Awesome. So one thing I noticed is our, this is really, really sharp. Um, just going with the whole idea that real life things aren't that sharp. Uh, let's delete this one again here. Uh, let's, let's hide this bar. Just press control, select it, press control H. And then let's uh, grab all these edges, double click, shift, double click, shift, double click, and bevel those, which is shift, right mouse button, and then hold it and just go to bevel here. Or if you put it on your shelf, it'll be up here. Or you can look in edit mesh and just bevel. But once you have that beveled, all four at the same time, let's uh, hold control and let's drag this small, like that. And then uh, let's work on cleaning up this topology because in games, well, in games and films, preferably you'll always want quads and a quad is face with four sides. However, when we beveled this, we created a face with five sides. One, two, three, four, five. So there's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and both sides. So let's fix that. To do that, we're going to use a, a new tool. We're going to. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Yawning. Uh, we're going to hold Shift. We're going to right click. And we're going to use the Target Weld tool. And you're just going to select this vertex. Hold, click, and drag to this vertex. And you're going to do the same over here. And you're going to do the same down here. Left click, drag. Left click, drag. Left click, drag. And then do the same on the other side. Left click, drag, drag. And then you're left with only four five-sided polygons on each side. And to fix that, I'm going to select this. I'll show you what it does here, and then we'll do it all at once. Select this edge. You're going to use Edit Mesh, Collapse, or you can add that to your shelf, uh, or hold Shift right mouse button, merge collapse edges, collapse edge. You do that on all of them. And then if you press Control Shift H, or sorry, just Shift H. Nope, I was right. Control Shift H. <laughs> that will bring back the last hidden object. 
So this is more just a quality of life for when we do baking. And texturing and stuff. So let's tidy this up. We can get rid of this ring. So double click it. And remember, if you just hit delete on the keyboard, you get the vertex pieces still. So when you select it, hold shift and go to delete edge. Shift right mouse button, delete edge. And then do the same. Wow. Do the same on the bottom. Grab the edge, double click, shift, right mouse button, click and drag to delete edge. And I've been doing something that I haven't been telling you, and I'll tell you about it now. Because it will help you clean up your objects. Um, as you do stuff, like watch. As I put edges on here, what's happening is I'm getting all this history, which is good. You can keep your history. This is over on the channel box editor. You can select the different things you've done. And let's say I wanted to change it now. Now I can go back and change that. Change uh, different aspects of the, th the things I've done. You can do that in the attribute editor as well. It's all here. Uh, but as you do stuff, you're, you'll start to get this huge list of history, and you probably have a bunch if you haven't been deleting it, which could actually cause your scene to crash sometimes. So uh, what you can do is delete your history. Now, I go edit, delete by type history. And you can put this on your put this on your your custom bar, but I use it like every fifteen seconds. So memorize this hotkey. Alt Shift D. Be very careful that you memorize the hotkey. Because if you press like Control Shift D, you're just gonna keep duplicating the object. And then you're going to end up with a bunch of objects. Uh, and that's not good. You just want one. Always, only, and ever. So, Alt Shift D. Delete history. And then uh, we can duplicate that. Actually, before we duplicate it, let's just quickly bevel this bottom edge here. And then let's get rid of these faces. Let's go. Let's uh, go to the front view. Select everything. And then zoom in and hold control and deselect this this uh, row of faces and this little tiny row of faces. And then hold spacebar, perspective, and that will leave you with just the bottom cap. And just press delete on your keyboard. Alt Shift D. That will clear your history. Uh, we don't need those faces because ultimately they'll be flat against the ground or there will be like let's say we uh,
Let's say we have rocks. Around our the bottom of our pillar or grass or something, you won't you won't need to see that. So let's duplicate it now. Mirror it. And spin it 180. And then uh, let's keep going. So we're going to put these pieces in. These are super simple. Just create polygon cube. We can bring it up there. This little blue handle will use only this axis. It will cancel out the color of the handle that it is. So blue only moves on the Y and X axis. So we just move that up there. And remember, uh, F frames the object you have selected. So let's bring that up here. Go to the front camera, spacebar, left click, front view. And we can just uh, make this the right size. We can do the snapping method again. Grab these. So right click, vertex, grab these. Click the Y axis and then middle mouse, hold V and snap those to the top edge there. And then let's pull this down, or sorry, pull these over. And then just grab this corner here and pull it down. And let's fit it tight against against here like that. And it, it's uh, thinner, so press R and pull it in like this. And let's delete the history. And in order to get it to, let's make it so that it uh, forms nicely to this pillar here. What we're gonna do is press control. And I'm gonna show you another way to work. Smart, not hard. Uh, right click, go to edges. This object is symmetrical on one side. So left click it, right click, edge, Grab this edge here, and you're going to do the edge ring and split that we learned on the last video. So control, right click, edge ring utilities, edge ring and split. And then select this face, double click this face, and press delete on your keyboard. And then select this one and delete. And you should be left with just this. Just half. So what we're going to do now is do the same edging and split here. Except this time, only select this edge and this edge. And just tuck that in as close as you can get it. And then grab this edge, or sorry, deselect this one by control dragging over it or control clicking it. And then just simply butt that up against the edge there. And let's pull this one up back a bit.
Yeah, that's good. Next, we'll um, we'll bevel these edges. So grab all the outside edges. These two, these two, everything on this face. Those two. And I'm going to show you a trick here with the viewport. If you can't see an object, you can uh, just select it and press this right here. This is called isolate. It just isolates that object. One thing Now let's grab the edges again. Right click, up, edge. Oops. Just grab all these edges and then we're just gonna bevel. That's shift, sorry. Right click, sorry, shift, right click, and it's to the right. Now, it might look like everything's broken, but that's just because you've isolated this object and you just made new faces. So Maya is going to be a little glitchy. So just turn it off and your item is fine. Except uh, we lost that little menu. So let's use the attribute editor to get our bevel back. So just over here on the right, attribute editor, find your poly bevel and just suck that in. There we go. Alt shift D deletes the history. And then to mirror this object, so that we get the other half back. Super simple. This is uh, something I do quite a bit actually. I'll hold shift, right click, go all the way down to mirror polygon. And then you want to mirror in one of these axes. So let me look, let go of everything. Just let me tell you, you need to mirror it this way. So this is the Z axis you can see right here, the blue arrow. And the axis points in the positive direction, this little gizmo down here. So if this is uh, Z positive, shift, right click, mirror polygon, negative Z, boom. There you go, it's done. Now you can delete. We don't want to delete that. <laughs> Alt Shift D, that will clear the history. Then you have this nice little piece. Uh, we won't. We won't be needing the bottom four faces. So here's a quick way to get rid of them. Uh, actually, no, keep them on there. Keep them on there, it'll help with the bake. So we can press Control D, bring this over. Let's just press E to get our rotate tool. And I'll tell you a little trick. Instead of rotating it, grab this E, the green handle, and like guessing 180. If you hold J, hold the J button on your keyboard, then spin, and it'll do it in increments. And then you can you can tell where 180 is. 
and then simply line that up using the right camera again, or sorry, the front camera. Hold space bar, pull down the front. So we just got to line up the, the top edge here. Space bar perspective. Let's just make sure we're there. And then to get these front, go to right click vertex, just grab them all and pull them forward. And get a nice, uh, keep the, um, the distance as equal as you can. The other way to do this would have been to go to go like this, perhaps. You could have just mirrored it. And then separate it. But that's just, it's extra work and complicated. The best way is to just duplicate it, bring it over, and then uh, move it in and pull the verts. So let's grab these. Now that they're made, it's the same concept. If I duplicate this, and go positive it's not really gonna work because of how much we've adjusted it changed the vertex so what we're gonna do is combine them shift right click combine it's down here Delete the history. Alt Shift D and then duplicate them. Control D. Center the pivot. Now we're just gonna bring them oops, center the pivot. Just gonna bring them over. Go to the front camera. Hold E and J, or sorry, press E to get your rotate tool. Hold J and then spin them 180. To make sure they're 180, just go back into perspective and make sure. Now you can just line this up. And there you go, it's perfect. And then you can grab these, shift, right click, separate. And then you can also do this. I use this command a lot. We just use the separate command on these. So if you want to repeat the command you just used, you just press G. And then it does it again. Obviously, we want to do the history. Alt Shift D. And I just was thinking about the bake when we bake later. Uh, let's put this back on. So, to fix what we took off before, super easy. Go to your edges, right click up to edge, select this, and hold Shift. And we just want to go all the way down to fill hole. Shift right click, fill hole. That'll give this big, huge face. And we select that. Shift right click, poke face.
and do that exact same thing over here. Go to edges, grab the edge ring, shift, right click, fill hole, go to face, right click, down to face, select it, shift, right click, poke face, and delete history, delete history. So next, we're just going to create another cube. Our picture is not centered. Mm. All right. When we scaled everything up, we blew it at a at a. We scaled the picture up at a different size than our objects. That's okay. It's just reference now anyway. We don't even need this behind it. So let's make this a uh, support, support beam. There we go. It's super generic. It's just a cube. This shouldn't take too long. Let's grab these verts here. Right click vertex and just click the Y arrow, hold V, middle mouse button, snap them to the top. And then we're going to hold V, left click the arrow, and then just snap those to the bottom. Make sure they're not crashing through. Just pull them up a tiny bit. And then grab all the edges. Yeah, grab. Click on the face. Click on this face. Hold control. Press right click. And then go to edges. Two edges. And that'll give you the edges that we want to bevel. Let's just fraction that up. Mm. Mm. Let's do all of them. Grab all the edges, bevel. So go to edges, shift, right click, edge. Oh, sorry, right click, edge. Select all of them, shift, right click. And over here is bevel. And just tuck those in. And Alt Shift D, delete the history. And I think we can we can just uh, make it a little thinner at the top for a little uh, design design uniqueness. And then. Uh, along 34 minutes let's keep going for a tiny little bit here let's make this top beam so create polygon that's uh, create polygon cube just gonna bring that up here now it's the same length as this so if we grab these, we can go here. Grab the verts, hold, press W, press the axis you want to move on, hold V, and just snap them to these ones. Not the out, outside, this, the bevel part. And then do that again over here with this side. Snap them, not to the outside, but to the beveled. I 
Actually, you know what? Delete this. Work smart, not hard, remember? Grab this beam, press Control D to duplicate it, and just bring it up. And then sit it down on top of that. Now, I think it's a little wider, so we can widen it. Let's do a little more. Now it bows upward. So let's create a middle point so we only work on one half. Select an edge, right click edge, select one. Control, right click, edge ring utilities to edge ring and split. And then right click face, grab these faces, delete them. Delete the history, Alt Shift D. Now we have half, well, let's work with that. Let's work with this. So let's um, let's select this edge and uh, bring out our our edge ring. Insert edge loop tool. Insert edge loop. And let's put one here. Actually, delete that or undo that. Click on Edge Ring tool, and in the options here, select multiple edge loops and then choose three, four, and then just left click, and it will space them out equally, except. Undo that and let's make five. There you go. Now, this is real simple. Go to the front view, grab all these top ones, let's pull them down. Let's uh, go to about here, get rid of these. Pull this up a bit, just a bit. And just pull them up so they curve nicely. Now this looks quite large. So let's go like this. And there you have it. And the other thing is this kind of shoots off to the side here. So that's real simple. We can just grab this outside edge loop here, or outside vertex cluster, and just pull them out a bit. And then we're going to mirror that. And to mirror again, look at your object you want to mirror, the axis you want to put it on, so the X. And axis shoots right, so it's in a positive. So select, shift, right click, mirror polygon, X positive. There you go. And there you have the uh, 
these, um, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> this little support beam and the top beam. And next, uh, tomorrow we will build the roof. Uh, so thank you. And I went over 30 minutes, but I hope that was a good little addition. And uh, don't forget to save. Save scene as three. Alrighty. Bye. Good luck. If you have any questions, just uh, put them below in the comments. Thank you. Bye.